So today we are going to focus on, it's a CV workshop essentially, it's going to be your um, whistle-stop tour of 22 years of my experience drawn into a session to help empower you, to help give you the confidence that you're doing the right things and trusting that the role will come if you keep doing the right things. It is such a tough time right now for anybody that is looking for a role. So the first thing I want to send you is a massive, 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 massive virtual hug from me to you, okay? Huge virtual hug um, because I know firsthand just how painful this period has been for all of you and how important it is that we support one another and that we lift each other up as much as we possibly can. And I'm here to do that for you over the next hour, but just please ask me questions as we go through in the Q&A box. I really want to make sure that you get what you need from this session. Okay, so who am I? So I know a couple of you already here um, and, um, and some familiar names and some new names. So it's really, really great to be here. I founded two businesses. One is the CNC Academy. Um, which is basically my passion project um, because alongside my 22 year history in recruitment um, I have also done a lot of training a lot of learning a lot of personal growing um, and working through my own challenges and as a result I felt really passionate about bringing my coaching expertise to a wider community because coaching is normally exclusively reserved for people that are earning a substantial amount of money or senior people within organizations and I know how impactful it is so those are the two different areas of my um uh, my benefit. oh Steph you've just sent that to me my darling but that is very kind of you. you need to send it to all panelists and attendees Steph's doing a bit of my promotion work for me um you are such a sweetheart you are such a sweetheart I will pop the link in here look this is this is, oh, there you go, you've done it, you are sweet. Um, so yeah, so yeah, so let's, let's move on a little. So in the academy, and the reason why I've used the academy here is we've got a vision of the world where everyone is equally empowered, enabled to thrive and grow in their roles. And we're on a mission to create the very best platform for everyone to be your assistant specifically, but everyone to be able to build the career of their goals. So let's have a look at what we're going to cover today. So your CV, the mindset, and all my 22 years of hints, tips, and tricks. All my 22 years of hints, tips, and tricks that I'm gonna to bring to you in this session today, okay? Now tell me why you're here. Just share with everybody because there is something so powerful with knowing um, what you need to do. Um, there's so sorry there's something so powerful about knowing that you're not the only person in this situation um and somebody's just asking me with saying asking whether it's a good time to look for another role or would you play it safe and stay put till next year so i would say that start prepping now but if you're in a position where you're in a role next year is going to be a lot busier so i would that would be my advice so use this time for prep time um, okay, so we've got somebody here that's, that wants some advice to update their CV, feels it looks a bit old fashioned. Why are you all here? Um, why are you all here? Tell me what your thoughts are, why you've joined me today, what you want to make sure that you get from this session. Let me know and I can make sure that your goals are hopefully met. Brilliant. Brilliant. So keep sharing and don't forget to share to everybody. That's it. Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay, so I'm going to give you the facts and figures to start with. And we're going to see here what it is we're working with and, um, and do chat all the way through this session. Okay, um, because even if I can't catch your chat at the moment in time, um, somebody else might. Okay, so the first applications to any advertised job are normally received about 200 seconds after a job is posted. Now this might be a shocking statistic for you, but all of the research tells us that only 15 to 27 seconds is spent on average looking at your CV. And this is why I so want you to view your CV 
as your PR document, your sales document. I want it to be a live, ongoing document. A CV is not a tick box exercise. It's something that should always be being updated. It should be a living, breathing document because it's an extension of you. And actually, it's the only pitch you have until you get in front of somebody. Uh, and I really need you to know that if we really do the work on your CV, it can be transformative. But yes, 15 to 27 seconds only. A spelling mistake or a grammar mistake and your CV will be chucked in the bin or in the delete box. Did you know that we, in, on the search side of my business and the recruitment side, on average, in any given month, over 80% of all the CVs we receive have typos, misuse, um, mis misuse of capital letters, or other spelling mistakes. So if you've completed your CV, you don't want feedback from everybody because that can get very confusing. And in my experience, you get a lot, a lot of the people I speak to get hugely conflicting advice around their CV. But getting somebody that's got amazing attention to detail to proofread your CV, definitely a good tip. Definitely a good tip. Did you know also that an 88% job projection rate if you have a photo of yourself on your CV? Did you realize that? So no photos, no photos on CVs. And then the other thing which I'm sure you're aware, and we're gonna come on to LinkedIn in just a minute, but is that 68% of all employers will Google you. So I'm gonna ask you the question, have you Googled yourself recently? Are you happy with what you find? Do you have everything that should be private as private? And are the photos, your Facebook profile photos, are they um, appropriate? Um, so that's really, really important. And I want you to see the difference between your cover letter and your CV. So your cover letter is, unless somebody specifically asks for a cover letter, most cover letters aren't read. It's your CV that people go to straight away as a general rule, not always, but as a general rule. And then my last little point for you is, um, what does your email address read? What does your email address read? So the last time I did this session, one of the individuals that was on this session had, um, uh, had mad as a box of frogs one at hotmail.com um, as her email address and she promptly changed it. It sounds, like the, it sounds like small things, but the devil is in the detail and how you represent yourself online and in your living, breathing extension of who you are is so important. Okay. So before we get into anything, I want you to take a couple of minutes now, I hope you've all got a pen and paper. My sessions are always interactive, so can you grab a pen and paper? And I want you just to start thinking and connecting with who you are. What makes you special? What is unique to you? What makes you the person professionally that is going to add value? What is the, about you that makes you a great friend? What is it about you that has, that has achieved in the past? So these are all of the things I have noted down for you about me. Um, and I would love for you to do the same thing. Just take a minute or two, or you can share in the chat box. Um, just let me know. So these are some of the things um, about me. So I want you to get in touch with who you really are to start with, that aspect of you that has uniqueness um, to bring, because I think it's so easy at the moment to feel disheartened and forget our value. And actually, when you think about the fact that out of 7 billion people in the world, the only one person that is like you is you. Everyone else is different. So you have this unique collaboration of skills, experience, knowledge, passions. And that's what is really important before we do anything else to get in touch with. Before we start looking at the next layer, it's this that we need to get in touch with, okay? So I've put stuff here like, I make an amazing spaghetti bolognese. Um, I'm a mum to two cats and three children. I'm obsessed with France. I've got a degree in psychology. 
Um, I'm a champion of women. I'm a female founder. I love dancing. It's all these bits that people, for, that people forget make them uniquely you. So when you've got some more time after this session, come back to this, because actually I think it's a bit like baking doing a CV. When you pour love into your CV and you really make sure it's representative of who you really are, it feels and looks different to those people that use it as a tick box exercise. And now more than ever, we need to be aware of that. So have you got your elevator pitch ready? Have you got an elevator pitch ready? So just say yes or no in the box, whether you have your, your, um, your paragraph that is an elevator pitch. Who's got that? Jane's got it. Amy's got it. Some of you got it. Fantastic. Amazing. Good. Brilliant. Okay. This is wonderful. Some of you have got one that's absolutely brilliant. Okay. So your CV is your personal sales document. It should tell a story about your career. It should sing and it should, have, it should have the sense that this is somebody that truly cares about what they've delivered and about how they present themselves. My next hint and tip is to find six, five or six roles online that you would really love the chance to take on. So five or six, so just note this down. So I want you to go away after this session, find five or six roles that are advertised online. And I want you then to look at all of the duties, all of the responsibilities and compare and contrast to your CV. And is there duties and responsibilities on the, um, uh, on those job descriptions that you've actually touched on but haven't put on your CV. Make sure that you include them. Make sure that your CV looks like it is comparable skills-wise with the jobs you're applying for. Really, really key. And then consider where is the WIFIM? What's in it for me? So as an employer, you want to be looking at a CV and, and thinking to yourself, my goodness, I have to interview this person. I can't not interview this person. They look so exceptional, I've got to interview this person. And if anybody wants a, um, uh, a template, you can email me for a um, CV template and an elevator pitch template. So if anybody wants that, my contact details will be at the end of this presentation. You can contact me, reach out, and we'll get those over to you. Um, it might be tomorrow because my entire office is moving office today. Um, and because I'm talking to you, um, I, I got to sit at home in my, in my office. That was handy, wasn't it? Um, okay, so where is the WIFIM? What's in it for me? And trusted, a trusted inner circle are really, really useful to look at your CV. If there's anything you think you've left out or anything else that they think you ought to be highlighting, it's worth getting that feedback. Typos, typos, typos. So key, guys. Make sure. The other thing is, is that people don't read CVs they skim read CVs. And so the reason why it's so important to have your date, the company, your job title, and then a bullet pointed list of responsibilities is because people can skim read bullet points, bullet pointed sentences much more easily than they can skim read written sentences. So aesthetically it looks better, but also um, all of the science tells us that the brain is more drawn to something that's accessible than something that requires work. So it makes sense when you think about it. So in your details on your CV, you need your name, you need your address, address can just be a postcode, um, contact details and your LinkedIn, um, and your LinkedIn link. Now I'm going to explain why that's so important in a minute. I know not everyone loves LinkedIn, but do you all have, um, 
do you all have your your um do you all have your uh, linkedin link on on your cvs um if you don't, let's get those on there. And we're going to talk about how you make this almost like an upsell on you once you've sent your CV. And I promise it works. And um, someone's just asking whether CVs are read by computers and bots. Um, so only in some startups and huge organizations. Other than that, it's human beings. Um, so it's if you want to have a look at what it's best to have repeated, um, in terms of work, I saw a an article by Laszlo Block. Laszlo Block. Now you are going to have to. Uh, so you can have a look at his latest article. Who and he gives some really good hints and tips on that. Um, if you are applying to huge organisations in order to help the artificial intelligence pick up your CV, I hate the fact that anything so important as uh, somebody being placed in an organization could have a bot or a computer involved at all but there we are that is the modern world we live in um, but most organizations don't use ai um, okay so your personal statement comes next and your personal statement should be your elevator pitch a paragraph and i'm going to give you a format for that in just a second Three or four key skills, bullet pointed. And then this is something that very few people have on their CV. What should come next is two or three key achievements that are relevant to the jobs you're applying for. So this gives somebody looking at your CV psychologically, you've got a very nicely presented CV, it's bullet pointed, it's all laid out beautifully, no obvious typos, great read this really fantastic little mini um, elevator pitch from this person, genius. His key skills are looking good, definitely relevant to the role that I'm recruiting for. Then, fantastic, they've got a couple of really impressive achievements on here. They're also relevant, and this gives them a sense of what you can bring to the organization that's above and beyond delivering against the spec. This is like putting sprinkles on a cupcake. It's that little extra that draws somebody in, that makes them want to look at your experience more, that makes them want to understand your experience more. Education can come before or after your work experience, entirely up to you. Sorry, ignore skills there. I don't know why I've got that down twice. Now, the next one is also really important your hobbies and interests. Now, hands up, those of you that have put something rather boring or very limited for your hobbies and interests. You know, maybe you've put cooking, seeing family, socializing with friends, something like that. Obviously socializing is difficult. Few of you have raised your hands there. Um, I want you to inject just as much love into this area. So, this tells somebody, again, who you are as a person. It also gives some really lovely touches on interview for you to have the chance to talk about things you're interested in. So for example, instead of saying, I love to read, say, I, I love to read um, Stephen King novels, or instead of saying, I love to cook, say, I absolutely love to create amazing cakes. Instead of saying, I love to go out to eat, say, my passion is Thai food and I eat and I go out to um, eat at Thai restaurants as much as possible. I want you to make it interesting so that somebody, when they get to the end of your CV, because when it's all laid out like this, why wouldn't they? And you've done your research because you've looked at your six roles you're interested in, you know that you have made sure your CV and those roles has a connection. Then you've got these really juicy, interesting hobbies and interests that tells them a bit about who you are. Um, and there you go, Sarah Elson's just saying, you've got hot air ballooning, it's amazing how many mention this during the interview. Exactly, exactly. And it doesn't matter if it's not quite as sexy as hot air ballooning, and it is reading, but just say what, what kind of books, who's the author you go to? Give them something to, to get hold of, you know, to really feel they're starting to get to know you. Um, absolutely. So this is your little elevator pitch. So I'm going to give you a, um, a profile and um, uh, 
it's going to be your career summary, your profile, but ultimately you need to know in your mind, this is my elevator pitch. And I've given you a really key structure. So it needs to resonate with the person you're applying to. So again, don't write it for you, write it for the people that are gonna be reading your CV, write it for them knowing what the sort of job specs are that you're applying for and how applicable your experience is to them. So these are your sentences. So between five and eight sentences, no more. This is your structure. And you'll have to tell me whether this is useful or not, whether this is something that you think, oh yeah, I could really do this. So the first one is to use, is who you are. Use your title, years of experience, and mention the areas you've worked in. So for example here, I'm a marketing director with 15 years experience in new product launches, business development, and merger and acquisitions. Then you go on and you mention your specialism. Um, and again, if any of you want to receive the, um, receive the slides for this today, again, you can email me um, when I share how to, get, how to reach out to me at the end of this presentation. So secondly, mention your specialism. What are you a subject matter expert in? And in 22 years of interviewing over 17,000 people, I have never found anybody that's not a subject matter expert in something. It could be anything, um, whether you're in the post room or the boardroom, you are a subject matter expert in something. So this is your chance to say what you specialize in, whether it's customer service, whether it's delivering assistance to um, extremely demanding individuals or people, on, it could be anything. So again, it's important though that it's joined up thinking. Not, you're not writing it for you, you're writing it for the people that are gonna read your CV. And then the next one is who, who are you used to collaborating with? So for example, it's really great for somebody to start picturing you in their organization when you're doing your little elevator pitch because they know when you apply for this particular, when you apply, for this role and if you were lucky enough to go on and secure that role that you're going to be collaborating on a daily basis with demanding stakeholders so it's brilliant it's obvious here this person's already done that they've been collaborating with senior level senior executive level partners and board members so again it's a really great way to say hello i am a perfect fit and then there's a fourth element that I, that I think everyone should include as you close off your little elevator pitch, which is passionate about, about something. So something you love to do, and remember the joined up piece again, but passionate about building and leading teams to drive results of high performance is what I've, what I've got for you here. But again, it could be anything. What are you passionate about? What do you love to deliver? What is going to be wonderful for the, for the clients that are reading your CV and really pack a punch when you close off that summary statement? I also want to remind you right now that this is all you need to focus on right now is this piece of work. So it's focusing on the step in front of you, not the whole staircase. So find these job descriptions. Let's start with getting this stuff done really, really well to the best of your ability. Then we start thinking about the next step. But right now we're thinking about this step. So I think we've got, I think we've got this now. I think you know the structure of the interview. I think, I think you're with me on this. So this is, I've just um, summarized this again for you. Now your education and qualifications, please don't lie. Please don't, please don't lie on your education and qualifications. Um, many, many, many people now will check qualifications and education at the end of an interview process. And people will regularly pull candidates uh, off a stage if they're discovered to have ha got well if they're discovered to have uh, mistruths you know on their CV or whether somebody's put a B and they actually got a C or somebody put a two one and they've actually got a two two don't lie okay you don't need to do that if you do all the rest of this work you really do not need to to step out of your integrity in order to secure the right role I promise you.
References. Now let's talk a little bit about this. I think I've gone on, I think I've gone on to talk about this um, a little bit in a minute, but um, I'm going to come back to that. Okay. Now what I want you also to do is as you go through your CV and the duties that you've done, make sure that you're using the past tense if it's in the past. This is the whole thing about CVs being living, breathing documents, not things that we finish. So many CVs I read, roles that people had delivered uh, or had completed three years ago still say um, my duties are rather than my duties were. So that's important, that is important. Two pages long, three absolute maximum. Two pages long, three absolute maximum. And another little reminder for you that at the moment, it's, it, it's the courage to carry on that matters. It is not the disappointment because the thing is at the moment, this isn't you. You are not to blame for what is happening at the moment. You are, you are not doing anything wrong. We can do some things better, but never in our history, or certainly not in our modern history, have we experienced anything like this. It is worse than 2008 in terms of the um, impact on employment. And so you guys are incredible. You've shown up here today. You're going to do the work that's going to help you the best you possibly can. Um, but it's not, it's not, it's not your fault. I prefer a two page CV myself. I think often on one page, it's really hard to get any sense of, um, of who a person is on just one page. So this is the thing I want you to look at when, you know, when we're talking about the CV, this sales pitch for you, I want you to look at these circles and say, does my CV tick these boxes? Does my CV have clarity? Is there a lovely positive energy in my CV? Is it engaging? Is there an ability to create a connection through my achievements and through my interesting, the, how I've described my hobbies? Is it clear that I have integrity and that I have a range of skills? Is it clear that I have strong values and that I am a subject matter expert? I want you to look at these and think, okay, my CV ticks this, 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 and this, but I think I could probably do a little more work on the energy in my CV, or I could do a little bit more around my why, which would be in my, um, in my elevator pitch. Um, or I could definitely do more around the emotional connection because I don't have any achievements or I haven't got into detail on my hobbies. What do you think, guys? Which of those circles would you immediately pick out and say, mm, I think I could definitely do better on this or this in terms of my CV? Share in the, share in the chat box. Where do you think you could, you could add some value immediately from, to your CV, just from these, these particular circles. Where are you noticing that mm, there might be a bit of a discrepancy in terms of that particular area on my CV? Yeah, so emotional connection, remarkability. What else, guys? Where else are you thinking, mm, I could probably have a little bit more of this in my CV or that in my CV? Okay. Yep, so someone's just shared remarkability. That's fantastic that you'll notice that energy. Brilliant, absolutely wonderful emotional connection. Great. Any more from anybody else? Any more? Just got a little sip of water. Okay. So this is the point about your CV that suddenly starts living and breathing when ultimately it's telling somebody a story. And it's highlighting all the things you're most proud of and that gives you a chance to really, um, when you go on interview, you can then start answering questions about these great achievements. You can then start ask, answering questions about these interesting parts of who you are in terms of your passions and hobbies. It gives a great anchor for the interviewer in the interview and it's a massive bonus for you because it means that person is tuning into exactly what you want to be talking about. Something that's going to really promote you and make you successful. 
So the other aspect that often gets lost in the interview process is connecting with your values when you're doing your CV. So what do I mean by that? Okay, so these are some examples of, of your values and how they can be expressed on your CV. So if, for example, let's say you absolutely love intellectual growth or personal development, you may have then on your CV a bullet point that um, in terms of your passions and interests around which sort of books you read and what sort of podcasts you're into. Again, for creativity, hobbies and interests are a perfect place to have that. If you really value order, then you might have something around how um, productive and, co and how exceptional your coordination skills are. But it's really important that you look at your values because ultimately your values are your priorities. And what will be really important as you're selecting your new role is that your values can be aligned with the organization that you then work with. So what I mean by that is that each organization has a cultural blueprint and, um, and, it, and a value system. And if you aren't really connected what, with what your own values are and your own value system, it can be very difficult to make great decisions and great choices about where you work and which roles you apply for. And it's a very interesting exercise. And all of this work that we're doing in this session is about aligning is about being very much in alignment with yourself, very much in alignment with who you are. It's about sending yourself a message that you are worthy and, and that, you are, that your job search is, is an extension of, who, of, who, of you, you know, it's really, really critical. So these are some of the values that you might look at if you're going to select your values when you think about how they're lived out in terms of your experience, but also the sorts of companies you want to join, the sorts of organizations you want to belong to. So just have a look at that, that list there in front of you and what's on there that immediately jumps out to you? What is on there that you immediately think, yes, I, I encourage people to pick out between five and 10 core values um, that helps to guide their job search in terms of the organizations that they apply for and making sure that those values are intertwined in the CV. So just in terms of, um, you know, how it's, how your CV is expressed. So it's interesting to see which of those values align with who you are. Okay. So it's super important that your CV is telling your story and it's being, and your values are there and it's about being honest. Now I want to go back to LinkedIn for a minute. So I want just to go back to, um, to your profile link on LinkedIn. Now, the reason why your LinkedIn is so important now is A, all employers look you up on LinkedIn, vast majority, but also it's an extension of your PR. LinkedIn is the easiest way possible to ask for recommendations from people you've worked with in the past and from ex-colleagues, from people you know. And so make sure number one, that your LinkedIn matches exactly to your CV. We've had a lot of incidences recently where someone's LinkedIn job title has been different to that on their CV. If you say you've got integrity and that's happened immediately, you're going to have lost any sense of real respect um, in terms of somebody feeling that uh, that you do have integrity when that's when that when actually the evidence says no, not so much. So it now is the time when people are very eager more than ever to help other people. So if you use your LinkedIn as a way to secure references through recommendations it's very easy for people to fill out it's a brilliant pr exercise then when somebody clicks on your profile and sees all these glorious recommendations for you and it's 
shows your professional and it shows your professionalism matters. So that's my big hint and tip about LinkedIn. Um, I hope that makes sense to you, but it's a way in a weird way. It's, it's a method that an employer can immediately see that what you're saying you are on your CV and who you're saying you are on your CV is genuine because here are these people saying that, yeah, this person's fantastic. This is the work they did for me, or this is when they worked for me on a project or whatever it might be. So definitely go into your LinkedIn profile, make sure it's as shiny as your CV is going to be and make sure that that LinkedIn is there ready um, uh, for somebody to go online and notice that you've got some great recommendations. Okay. So value systems are very important. So we want your CV to sing. And if you do all of this work on your profile, both LinkedIn and your CV, I promise you it will make a gargantuan difference. Now, what I would like to, to ask you to do is if you have any questions right now about anything at all, um, I've got a couple of questions here, but any questions at all, somebody's asked, um, should you please put them in the question and answer box because now is your time for question and answers. So um, if you want to carry on working with me, we run a coaching club, um, which is a couple of people who are on this call or on the coaching club. And for all of you today, you can have a, your first month for free. Um, you just need to go online we, we meet weekly and we talk about all different areas of personal development. It's amazing. So you're welcome to try, come and try out our coaching club. We also have lots of workshops and courses. Um, today's obviously really just a taster. Um, and we don't tend to focus on CVs, but I'm very happy to do that. So somebody's asking me whether only five years of experience should be included in, on your CV. Okay, so the answer is no. Ideally, you would include all of the relevant experience. So, I mean, I worked 22 years ago, I worked in Sainsbury's. Is that relevant? No. So it's, it's assessing at what point is, does the relevance kick in and make sure. Now, if you've only got two years experience, then you'd include all two years. But if like me, you've got 20, gosh, 25 years of, of experience, I would look to have that last 10 to 15 years detailed on my CV, um, really important. Um, really important because actually the wealth of experience is really key for lots of employers. Lots of employers want somebody that have the breadth of skill, that have the wealth of experience. And someone else has just asked, do you th what do you think about reaching out to hiring managers directly on LinkedIn after sending a CV for an opening? 1,000%, definitely. I think it shows initiative. I think they can immediately go onto your LinkedIn profile and see whether they think you've got relevant experience. Um, and I absolutely think that's a brilliant thing to do. Are you all on Glassdoor as well? Is everybody also on Glassdoor as well as LinkedIn for roles? Because Glassdoor is a great place um, to also seek out roles. Someone else has asked, should I state a career break on CV? Yes, I think so, because it allows your CV to tell the story neatly. So with a career break, you just put the dates and you put what, put what you're doing, raising your children or um, looking after, you know, being a carer for a parent or having gone traveling, whatever it might be. Our life stories are who, everything we've done, every decision we've made to date has brought us to this place right now and has created the human that we are right now. So if we try and hide things or don't think we ought to put it on our CV, then actually we're hiding part of who we are in our life experience. So absolutely put it on, be proud of whatever it was that you were doing. Um, and if it was raising children, then that's an amazing, amazing set of skills that you've developed right there. So you know, be proud of any breaks you've had, but also know what value they bring. That's really important. Really, really important. Okay. 
So um, somebody's returning to work uh, and now over 50 and the first 10 years of my life, I work for very high profile people and companies. I've got testimonials from all. So I'd like to retain these. No, I think absolutely. It's no, I think any glowing, any glowing um, uh, references, any glowing um, uh, testimonials are always value. Absolutely always valuable. Somebody just asked me about what's my opinion about speculative letters. I think at the moment you could be, it could, uh, for me, I would want to know that a company is likely to be recruiting right now before I spent a lot of time sending speculative applications, just because your time is precious. And at the moment it could lead to a, more, a greater sense of disappointment. Um, but certainly, um, reaching out to the, the hiring manager of, of, on LinkedIn for roles that you're applying for, absolutely, that's a great idea. Looking on Glassdoor. Um, there's also a couple of apps that have now started up that are advertising, and I don't know if I can remember off the top of my head, it's a very good app that are now advertising all of the roles in startups. Da, da, da. Let me see if I can find it for you. Hmm. Uh, yes, here we go. It's called Otter HQ. So it's this. So you, you can have a look at Otter HQ, everyone, um, as well as have a look at um, Glassdoor and LinkedIn. Okay, and someone's just asked me about the coaching club. It's a weekly meetup on Tuesdays um, at 6 p.m. and we look at all areas of personal development. We use um, NLP tools, um, I lead people through that um, and it is sensational and it's about the price of a coffee and a cupcake a week um, but the first month is free to all of you if you did decide to join us. So you can have a look at the coaching club on that, um, on that link. Um, so thank you very much for asking that. Um, and um, Annette has just asked, um, when, you, when you move on from a role, how should you, okay, so I understand what you're saying. Um, basically, the, um, in an interview process, when you leave a role because you've just decided that actually you've outgrown it or it's not the right role for you anymore, you simply say that after several meetings of trying to um, uh, tailor the position so that it was able to retain you because you'd grown a lot, you would delivered a lot, but had decided that actually that in the end, the best thing to do in order to continue to build and grow your skills in your career was to move on. That's absolutely fine. That's absolutely fine. Not a problem at all. Not a problem at all. Um, and if they've got a written reference for you, even better. Um, I found that getting, um, for my, uh, for people I'm working with um, on the search side of the business, that it's much easier for them to secure references or recommendations on LinkedIn than it is um, getting people to write written references. Um, so yeah, might be, might be worth um, you having a look at that. Um, certainly as a way to secure more positive reviews and testimonials for you. Any other questions? Any other questions from anybody else at this moment in time? Is there anything else I can answer for you, lovely people? Um, anything else at all? Anything else at all? Okay. Okay, well, you can reach out to me on email in and on email if you would like a template for your cv um, or if you would like a template for the um the uh, elevator pitch you can reach out to me not a problem at all and of course you're all welcome someone's just said can i connect with you on linkedin of course you can um, this is how to contact me directly um, uh, that's actually the academy email address, but you can reach me there for the search area too. Um, so please do reach out. Um, please, please, please do reach out 
uh, with uh, to me for either the template or indeed the um, the elevator pitch structure um, and I'm really hoping that you've picked up two or three things from from this session that you're going to go away and implement that may hopefully make a difference to your applications so may hopefully make a difference to your applications so tell me share with me just before we leave each other today has there been a couple of tools or tricks or or areas that you've picked up on today that are going to be useful for you that you're going to go away and do some work on that's going to help um, that's going to help you in the future. Do share with me, let me know what you picked up on here that might have been useful to you today before we say goodbye to one another. Great, somebody's saying that they're going to go away immediately and do lots of work on their CV. Fantastic, saying positive. And the LinkedIn on there. Yeah, being highlighting the personal side, brilliant. Work on the elevator pitch, adding details that make you more authentic. I love that. Telling a story, super stuff, and staying positive. Yes, my darling. Yeah, absolutely. This is not your, it's not anybody's fault, and we're all in it together. We are all in it together. Okay, okay. And Michelle's going to expand her elevator pitch. Brilliant. And your interests. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right. Well, listen, if there's no other questions today, if there's nothing else you wanted to ask me today, then reach out to me for any of that information that we've mentioned today, if that can help you or support you. Um, and if there's anything else I can obviously do, I always will do my very, very best. So thank you so, so much for being here with me today and um, an enormous, enormous thank you to all of you for investing your hour of your precious time with me. And um, I'm going to say thank you very much, everybody, and, um, and wish you all a very wonderful rest of your day. So thank you, everybody saying goodbye now and um, I'll really look forward to speaking to you very 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 soon I hope thanks everyone thank you for coming <music>